Hello, I'm Mrs. Jansen, and today in our art, we'll be creating an amazing abstract. First, let's compare and contrast different types of art. Here you see two famous examples of realism. Realism is art that depicts or shows things in the real world exactly as they appear or look. This type of art looks similar to a photograph. The artist shows how people, animals, objects, and landscapes look in real life. On the left, you see an oil painting created in 1665 by Dutch historic artist Johan Vermeer, who lived in the past from 1632 to 1675, and he titled this work of art, Girl with a Pearl Earring. On the right, you see raspberries and goldfish, painted by American artist Janet Fish, who lives and works in Vermont and New York. This is a watercolor painting that she created in 1981. I'd like you to look at these two works of art and compare how they're similar. Maybe you said that these two look like things look in real life. Maybe you noticed that they share similar color. Maybe you noticed the blue on the scarf that the girl's wearing and the blue on the plate in the fishbowl and the vase. Maybe you share that they're both paintings and that they were both created by artists and that they're both famous. Now let's think about how they're different. Let's look at the contrast. You might have said that one of them is an oil painting and the other is watercolor. You might have said that there's a very dark background behind the girl with a pearl earring. And on the right, you're noticing a lot of light and reflection. You might be noticing the differences in the colors you see. And you might notice that there's no goldfish flowers or raspberries with the girl with the pearl earring, and there's no girl in the painting with the raspberries and goldfish. Here, let's look at examples of abstract art. Abstract art is when the artist chooses to use the art elements such as line, shape, color, value, texture, and space to represent which means show or stand for a subject, which is a person or animal, an object, which is a thing, an idea or an emotion. Abstract art looks different than real life. The artist creates art with meaningful connections. The viewer, the person looking at art can make their own meaningful connections and decide what the art means or represents for them. So here you see two famous artists and the artist on the left is historic Russian artist Wassily Kandinsky. He lived in the past from 1866 to 1944 and he's considered to be a pioneer of abstract art. That means he was one of the first people to make art this way. 
He saw colors when he heard music, and he painted what he heard. On the right, you see historic American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. She also lived in the past from 1887 to 1986. She's considered to be a pioneer of American modernism. One of the first people to paint that way. She is best known for her paintings of enlarged flowers, New Mexico landscapes, animal skulls, and New York City skyscrapers. She carefully observed something small like a flower and then painted only a part of it, making it much larger than it was in real life. So let's compare these two works of art and share how they're similar. I'm thinking that one thing you might notice is they're both works of abstract art. They do not look like things look in real life. You may have noticed that they're colorful and the paintings are large. You don't see a person, animal, or object. You see lines, shapes, and colors. Let's do contrast. Let's look at these paintings and share how we see differences. How are they different? You might have said that you see more colors in the painting created by Wassily Kandinsky. You may have also noticed that there are more shapes and lines and brush strokes in the painting that Wassily Kandinsky created. You may have noticed that Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings appear much larger than Wassily Kandinsky's. And you see large areas of color. So now we're going to look at these three works of art and we're going to make connections. I'd like you to ask yourself, what do the elements of art, line, shape, color, texture, value, and space make you think of? Do they remind you of anything in real life? Remember, we all see art differently and make different connections. There is no right or wrong answer. When you look at the image on the left, and notice the spheres. Many students have shared that they make a connection with the planets or the solar system. And some of the lines might remind them of how they orbit. Other students have shared that this image reminds them of bowling. Remember, we all see things differently and there's no right or wrong. Let's look at the image together in the center. Some students have shared that that curved line in the shape of a rainbow 
just beneath the middle of this painting reminds them of the world. And the shapes beneath that curved line makes them think of the world map, the countries, and the blues, sometimes the water in between the countries. The shapes on top of the earth often remind students of buildings. And behind those rectangular shapes, often students have shared different times of day, daytime and sunset. They've also shared that they see mountains. We've had other students share that they saw robots. Now let's look on the right at this image. What does it make you think of? Some students shared that it reminded them a lot of a pinball game. Other students shared that it reminded them of an aerial view looking down from above at a beach or a pool. And the circles were the tops of the umbrellas. Some students have seen a bird. I'd like you to notice the yellow shape on the left and think about the head of a bird and the blue circle being the eye. The green triangle is the beak. And then students have shared that they've seen another bird. Underneath the green triangle, that circle that has two colors in it is also the eye of a bird. And the yellow oval that has the lines inside it is the second eye. The pink represents the bird's head and then the rectangle that has the reddish orange and the yellow is also a beak. There are so many different connections that we can make when we look at artwork and remember there's no right or wrong. When you look at art, you make your own connections and you decide what that artwork means to you. So here's a quote I wanted to share that Georgia O'Keeffe said, I found I could say things with colors and shapes that I couldn't say any other way, things I had no words for. So let's create an abstract work of art together. Please have your paper, pencil and crayons ready. You'll see my screen change so that we can draw together. So today we're going to start with our paper portrait style. It's vertical or the tall way. And the first thing that you need to do is take the right side and bring it to the left side. You're going to be matching the corners at the top and the bottom. And then this roll that you see on the right, you're going to press it down with your finger. You might do this a couple of times. So now you just created a fold or a vertical line in the center of your paper. Now we're going to fold the paper, the bottom to the top, and we're gonna match the corners at the top on the right and the left. And you're gonna have this fold at the bottom or this roll. Press your finger firmly against that roll and now you've created 
another fold or horizontal line. So here we have four rectangles. And the first thing we're going to do is draw a straight vertical line inside that vertical fold from the top of the paper to the bottom. And we use that fold as our guide. We draw right inside there. Let's add the horizontal one from the left to the right. All the way across the paper. So the abstract work of art that we create today is going to have geometric shapes and lines. And we're going to create the same one together today, but you can create your own future works of abstract art. So the first thing we need to do is think of our geometric shapes. Consider today using a circle, triangle, rectangle, and a square. They can overlap if you choose. So first let's draw three shapes. And you do not have to draw them exactly as you see me draw the shapes on my paper. So I'm going to start with the triangle. And now I'm going to add a rectangle. I've decided that I like it to be overlapped by the triangle. So I'm only going to show the part that we see. So I'm going to remember to pick up my pencil when I come to something I've already drawn. And I'm not going to show the rest of the rectangle. Next, I'm going to add a circle. And now inside of one of these shapes, add a smaller shape. I'm going to add a smaller circle. inside the triangle. So now we're going to draw a wavy line diagonally from the top to the bottom of the paper. And we can all draw it differently. I'm going to start at the top. And now I'm going to pick up my pencil when I get to the rectangle. And I have a choice to make. Am I going to continue this line on top of the rectangle? Or would I rather have this line look like it's behind the rectangle? I'm going to have it look like it's behind the rectangle in my work of art. You make the choice that you believe is best for yours. And remember when it's behind, I pick up my pencil and I followed along with my fingers so I knew where the line would come on the other side. So I'm going to add that wavy line. And I've decided I want to go on top of the triangle. And I'd like to go on top of this smaller shape. And I want it to look like this goes inside and out the other side. So this time, I'm going to lift up my pencil, follow along, and I'm going to add the line on this side. This way, it looks like that line goes through that opening. Okay. 
So now I've got the wavy line that goes from the top to the bottom of the paper. And it moves diagonally. So down and then diagonally and diagonally again to the bottom. And now I'm going to add three lines. I'm going to add a vertical line, a horizontal line, and a diagonal line. So go ahead, you can add those anywhere you'd like. I'm going to add the horizontal line at the top right from the rectangle to the edge of the paper. I'm going to add a vertical line to the right of the, the center line underneath the triangle. And I'm going to add a diagonal line beneath that horizontal line. And I'd like it to look like it's behind the circle. So I picked up my pencil. So here we've got our work of abstract art. And notice how we have overlap. We have differences in size. We have differences in shapes. And we've used different lines. So you can make connections with these shapes and you can decide what they mean to you. You can also make connections with color and decide what the color represents on each shape. So the next thing you'll do is use a black crayon and trace over the lines that you drew that center vertical line the horizontal line that go from the top to the bottom of the paper and from side to side and then you need to trace over each of your shapes and remember to trace over that wavy line And then those three last lines that you added, the horizontal, the vertical, and the diagonal. And now you have choices to make, and this is just one example, but you get to decide how you're going to color your artwork. You might decide that you'd like to color your artwork in all warm colors, the reds, the oranges, and the yellows, or maybe you decide that you'd like to use the cool colors, the blues, the greens, or the purples, or maybe you'd like to use both. So in this example, I decided that I would make the primary colors on the shapes, and that I would use the secondary colors the green, the purple, and orange in the interesting shapes I created with the lines. So this is your artwork and you get to make choices. Choose what's best for you and your artwork. And I hope you enjoyed creating this work of abstract art today. And I hope you'll consider creating more works of abstract art. I look forward to making art with you again 